commission meeting. It is 5.03. Now he's going to um, give us our invitation. Father God, we thank you for this day you've given us, and we thank you for allowing us to serve this city. Lord, we ask you to give us the knowledge and the wisdom that we need to make good decisions for our people. Lord, we ask you that you would take care of us, Lord. We ask you to bless our country, bless us in the days to come. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Session item to discuss. Y'all ready? We're ready. I'm not sure I missed something. Well, I did just want to say this, uh, City Clerk. This is an excellent agenda. You've got, you've got a lot of stuff in here tonight, so thank you for the hard work. I mean, we got this. Got Good job. Right. I know it's, it's been a, and we appreciate you guys too for being patient with us. We've had some really long meetings, but we've been getting a lot of things done. We've been busy, busy, busy. All right, so I'll go ahead and start with number one update. To city council schedule reschedule city council meeting on tuesday november 5th 2024 to thursday november 7th 2024 due to the 2024 presidential election so basically that um tuesday of that week that's the um presidential election we're not going to have our meeting we're going to move it to that thursday i think that's a good idea like we do the regular holidays yeah. Yeah. before we start can we turn microphones? Yeah, let's make sure everybody can. Make sure. Thank you, Ashley. Everybody's heard. Do I, and I want to have one. I thought I had it on. It's just hard to hear that end. Okay. All right. Okay, number two, add. Um, this is an add item. And also, too, um, our agenda is a little bit different from what we um, sent out. We did have, I think it's the same, but it's highlighted what we took off and what we added. So it may not match up to what went out. Right, Alex? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. All right. So number two, an item update from Ryan Coleman regarding master recreational plans. Come on down, Ryan. <laughs> so I'll try to do this as often as you guys would like. Of course, Very often. During, during this process, there's um, deliverables that'll be set up like schematic design, design development, like it's in your proposal. And in those meetings, we'll probably have a community presentation at a council meeting. It won't be just an update. But I'll do this as often as you need us to, to do this. Um, so where the project is right now, we, the survey is complete on the site, the proposed site down um, at the end of 21 here. Also what's been completed is the, geote the preliminary geotechnical study. So right now we're in schematic design. We'll be setting up um, meetings and design uh, meetings to talk about scope with Steve and his board um, really soon. Uh, we have some vacation happening right now at, the, at, at Williams Blackstock, and as soon as those guys get back, we'll start those meetings as quickly as possible. Any so, questions? Yes, so would that be for both sites? For the, the new pool site and the old pool site, are we starting those meetings? We'll have those discussions immediately. Really what you need to do on the old pool site, the existing municipal pool site, is um, make a decision on whether or not you want to move forward with that now. And if you do, we need to amend the design contract to include it. Because the original contract with us is just about doing the, the, the future pool, right? So will you get with Steve so he can have that correct wording and yeah. he can bring it to us? So yeah, we, absolutely. Okay, and Alex, so we would know what we actually need to consider absolutely. so we'll know what next steps. So for, the next, for the next work session, we'll do that and, and the cost it would take us off. But we also need to get the DECA and LWCF to sign off. They already, it's already happened. They already did. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they already signed off on the plans that were proposed. Okay. Yeah, so. that's already happened. So, and then to just, um, just send it to everybody so that we can all just see it. I think this is something exciting. I think everybody, this is a long awaited and I think we're just ready to start digging in the ground. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I told you this yesterday, and of course the municipal pool site will have a shorter schedule. It's not as complicated as what we're doing on 21. So that one shouldn't be as long. It should be nine months, I guess is what I'm saying, before you start bidding that type of work out. So as soon as we get that contract amended, we can get started and it shouldn't take long. Would it be nine months for the contract for the existing oh, yeah. site as well? No, 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 that's what I was just saying. Uh -oh. the, the future municipal pool site, the big project, that's a nine month design schedule. <clears throat> the, the existing pool, redoing that to what you want, it's gonna be a shorter time frame. It shouldn't take that long. 
maybe three months, three months, okay. three or four before we're ready so to bid the out. The current schematic phase we're in is the nine month. Nine That's month right. Phase. Okay. That's correct. <laughs> and then how many phases after that? It's schematic design, then it's design development, then it's construction documents. And honestly, there's not a lot of meaning there in construction documents. Construction documents is about putting together together the technical specs for the bid process. And it's about four months of the design schedule. So there won't be a lot of meeting in there. So really we've got two major milestones, schematic design and then design development. And then you won't see much from the design team after that until it's time to bid the project. Well, you guys have any more questions on that? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you thank so you. much, Brian. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you every two weeks for an update. And thanks. I'll every two, two weeks? weeks? Once a month? <laughs> no. <laughs> you said as often as we like. That's what you, you threw it out there. I, I, was, I retract it. I, I, Steve, if you nothing changes, you can just say nothing changes. Steve's on the same page as I am. I think the public is to make sure you got that, Paul. Every two weeks, we're going to get an update. So number three, discussion that is necessary by Michael Rice Engineering Environmental and Forestry Services Company, PC, to apply for the Highway Safety Improvement Project a HSIP grant through Alabama Department of Transportation for Old Birmingham Highway and James Payne Boulevard. Es estimated total cost is $649,636, 10% city match totaling $64,964. And come on down, Michael. You doing all right tonight? I am. How are y'all? We're good. All right. Um, well, this project, as you all know, uh, has had some significant crash history <coughs> for the last few years there. And um, I know you guys hired the traffic engineering consultant that we worked with, Skipper, to prepare a, what they call a traffic signal warrant study to see kind of what was warranted to improve the uh, safety of that intersection. And when they looked at it, they, they decided that the intersection of James Payton Boulevard and Old Birmingham Highway did warrant a traffic signal. Um, and so, kind of since that, that study had been done, we had looked at how, how do we get that funded? You know, are there any funding sources to, to make that happen? Just a signal alone without any other, you know, work is averaging three hundred to 350000 now. And so... Um, Kind of went through the process, went and talked to ALDOT, and they said we had this program called the HSIP program, Highway Safety Improvement Program. And there's a big push um, across the state for safety improvement projects. And so I had I had kind of coordinated with ALDOT and the, the managers of that program to say, hey, is this a good fit for that program? And they looked at it, evaluated, and they said, yeah, you know, they do a benefit cost analysis and this project had a high benefit cost analysis. Um, and, and so they, they recommended that, that the city apply for that, that grant program. So tonight, that's, you know, that's what's kind of before you. I think you've got different documents uh, for that application. But basically the scope of, of the project would be to resurface from the bridge right there. Um, I guess that's Shirty Creek or whatever, but from the bridge all the way up to there's a there's a paving joint where the county stopped right before you get to Alabama Avenue, and so the, that that area would get resurfaced. There would be some restriping done in there, some access management with Garden Drive, and then there would be a signal um, installed at the intersection of James Payton Boulevard and Old Birmingham Highway. Do you not have any questions on me? Mm -hmm. I do have. Oh, go ahead. The signal, how would it be set up? Is it like, um, it's not going to be a complete intersection, it's just going to be a single signal there? It's not going to be like these intersections here? Uh, no, it'll be controlled all directions, okay. you know, so the, the, what we're thinking is a mast arm instead of a signal pole and strain wire running across there, uh, just because of, of utilities on the I guess it would be the west side, the James Payton side, there's a lot of utilities, so trying to get poles and stuff around there would be somewhat difficult and have clearance between those utilities. So we're looking at doing mast arms, I guess what would be on the east side of Old Birmingham Highway um, and, and getting traffic signals, you know, controlling each direction. Will there be additional lanes? Uh, no, sir. The, the, Proposed improvements are to lengthen the turn lane. So if you're on northbound 411, as you approach uh, James Payton Boulevard, they want to lengthen that left turn lane, mm -hmm. give the folks more room to stack 
and, and kind of wait safely on the on the light. There'll be some traffic um, pavement markings added on James Payton Boulevard as you approach Old Birmingham Highway. And then one of the bigger things is there'll be some, some restriping at that Garden Drive uh, apartment complex right there um, done. And the, uh, everything will be paved, delineated, pavement markers, um, just kind of a whole, a whole new, new uh, resurfacing through there with the traffic signal. Yeah, but no, no widening. There's no three lanes. It, the functionality of that intersection was it, it had a high. Um, it was functioning well as it is. It didn't need to be widened to improve. So applying for the grant, what's the certainty of getting it or timetable for being considered? So full uh, disclosure here. I've never applied for this grant before. Um, I've consulted with Aldot, and they said it was a good fit for this project. So once you know, the city approves the application. I don't know what that looks like, but I'm assuming that uh, in the, the coming two to three months, you would get some kind of letter back saying approval or not approval. And then they usually give you a 12 or 18 month window to get it let to construction after that. So I would think, you know, if they approve the project within 12 to 18 months, it's gonna be under construction. I have a question about something else. I know we talked um, in the past about a sidewalk project. Do you remember that? So any updates on that or has anything like that come across your desk? Because I know that was something we were interested in, kind of like um, not putting in new sidewalks, but resourcing the existing sidewalk. <coughs> I, haven't, I haven't looked at that any further. I know, uh, I think the last time we talked, Get from maybe re we look at the areas that had high pedestrian activity and that needed to be rehabbed. Mm -hmm. um, if, you know, we can do that if we need to. This project specifically, though, it does have um, it does have accommodations for a future sidewalk because you got a lot of you know apartment complexes that kind of use connectivity to the commercial side near 280. So that, but, I know, but I know that was putting in some additional ones. We were trying to, well, me, I think um, a couple of us were interested in this, just trying to get some of the existing sidewalks maybe widened or resurfaced, yeah. something along that matter. Okay. If there are areas of, you know, hey, th th these are the areas in my district or in the city that, are, that have a lot of pedestrian activity that need to be looked at, if you let me know, I'll, I'll kind of look at those and see what we can find. So we'll just get with Reed and he can um, get that list over to you. Yes, Thank you, Michael. Okay. You got Thank you, Michael. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks, Michael. Michael. All right, number four, discussion that is necessary by Mayor Hyo regarding a proposed plan for the food world building. Mayor Hyo. I <coughs> brought that to your attention a couple weeks ago. The building is extremely <coughs> solid, but we need to try to save it. And the main thing is going to be the roof. We've looked, I showed you a print of how it could be used partially for an animal control, also for the street department. Both of them are, have put their input into it and listened to uh, Captain News. I think he might, might want to put the police station over there. But we do need to save that building. We, we've, uh, we need to uh, go ahead and put a roof on it and save it. It's got a lot of potential for our future, for the city. We've had seven people look at it. Uh, Practice supply and all, but uh, uh, since we had those issues, uh, we do need to save the building. If we don't do anything else, put the roof on it. I know I have a few thoughts on this. Um, I, my thoughts are, I mean, I agree with putting the uh, PD over there. I do, I do agree with that, but you know, I know it cost a good amount of money too to probably get it up and going, but it is ours, so we need to. Uh, Estimated 600 on the roof, is that right, Mike? Well, it was a few years back, it was 600. Also, yeah. oh, good change now. With yeah, and then on the inside, having to remodel. It's over 8.1 8, 8. acres, I believe, in that area. Yeah. You're probably looking at spending another couple of million to get it ready for anybody. Well, we look at that down the road. Yeah. Yeah, but. Main thing to save the building now with the roof. I will say I'm not in favor of putting the animal shelter there, not in the middle of, of town. That's, I don't think that's something I could get behind, unfortunately, Mayor. Um, or animal shelter now has got a lot of issues and we want to continue to have issues. He didn't care. Uh, I know it, but could you imagine an animal shelter being in the middle of town and yeah. people just dropping off animals there? That's 
to me. And, well, and, I, and I, I don't know if those residents would like it also. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a resident, I wouldn't like it. And you know, people just be dropping animals off and I think it would just make the problem worse than what it is. Um, I wish we could afford to um, put the police department there, that would be nice, but again, I- But just look at the potential for the future, the legislature will find it. Anybody else have any more um, comments on that? Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Number five, discussion that is necessary by Building Services Director Mike Westone regarding Isla Comer Museum Roof and Waterproofing Project 23-119 regarding the use of contingency funds for the Isbel, Isabel Comer Museum Free Roof and Waterproofing Project 23-119. 3-119 for Lathan and Associates, additional engineering fee of $2,200 for special site visit and report on work night not in original scope of work. After visit and report provide guidance on specific repairs as may be needed at their standard hour, hourly rate of $235 per hour contingency funds if free. Mike. What they're asking for, what we're asking for there is just for the engineer to come look with our waterproof of the building. They found some of the tiles on the top of the building real loose. I'm talking about their large tiles, like 24 inches by four feet. And they're, they could potentially fall and the way they're put up is not normal. And they, they just gotta come up with some solution to either put them back up safely or just redo the top part of the front. All right, you guys, I don't see any issues with that. Any I questions on that? I don't know. It's important. All right, so number six, um, Building um, Service Director Mike Weststone for Engineer Consulting, totaling $500, and this was just a part of your budget, and since we took, sent all the money back, we're having to get everybody to issue, issue purchase orders. I got you. So That's this right. was originally in his budget, and yep. he just had to get and okay with this. All right. So number seven, discussion that is necessary by Amber Johns to consider Jessica Marie Hall for the position of magistrate at a rate of MCA-1-2-1861 <coughs> effective September 9, 2024. Amber? Yes. She has a paralegal degree. That's what we're giving her compensation for the degree she has. Tim, um, I see that it says September 9th. Did we um did she did she get the um the compensation when she was hired? James did up. <coughs> as soon as she gave it to me, I submitted it to y'all. So I guess she was hired on the ninth, and that's when she brought it up. Okay. So it was it was already told was every, everything was on the table. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is the uh, paralegal degree is it uh, comparable to an associate's? Yes. Uh, I got another question. So is she already receiving this rate or are we gonna have to no, do I retro it in again? <coughs> but she hasn't but she hasn't received her first pay yet. That's correct. Okay. All right, you guys have any questions on it? No questions. Right. Does she the, okay. but she has it. Yeah, yeah. she has it. Yes, okay. yeah. She has it. It's not gonna be retroactive or anything because she hasn't received her first check, right? <coughs> right? Sounds good. Number eight, discussion from interim police chief Rondell Meese that is necessary to approve 020 restaurant retail liquor license application for Sheffin, thy owner of Crazy Crabs Juicy Seafood located at 1371 West 4th William Street in Sulatina. Please forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Wow, the background check was made, they're good. Okay. All right, any questions on this guys? Mm -hmm. All right, so number nine, discussion that, discussion from interim police chief on the use that is necessary to approve 050 retail beer off premises only license application from Kelly M. Gilps CFO Zachary John Bryan, CEO and family, Christine Taylor, LLC, manager of Dollar General Store 2332, located at 1 North Broadway Avenue in Silicon Valley. Background check was good there also. Okay, all right. Any questions on this one, guys? The, I'm assuming the old one shut it down, they're just moving over and expanding. From my understanding. I would think so. I think so. And the ABC board's already approved everything. Check. Okay, sounds good. Number 10, discussion that is necessary by Human Resource Jane McGee regarding education policy updates. Hello, everybody. 
And these have the, um, so this is all the critiques. So that was just for your information, in case you wanted to know, we did, we did post for the 10 days for, through yesterday. And uh, we didn't really get a whole lot of feedback prior to posting it, one person just wanted to know about the qualifying degrees and certifications, so we gave them a copy. And then we had one person question uh, five years, and uh, we sent out a response to everyone about that. We also had a person who didn't really understand that we're a new employee, and they thought it was an opportunity to sign up for training. And then we had, um, someone who also was new that, that just wanted to know different scenarios, so we met with her. And so really, we didn't get a whole lot of feedback, which is, I guess that's a good thing. And I think we explained it in detail about the five years. So, so, so with that the, said. So, so with the five years, so how did that go? And I know um, I got some feedback about that as well. And I think, um, I got an email right okay. And I think that's negotiable. I think people just don't understand. And then you got people that don't want to understand. But basically the main driving point with the five years is to motivate people to stay because, you know, you train them and they go. Um, there was one department that we specifically had in mind. And it was the police department because we've had a lot of turnover in that department for people last few years and a lot of people misunderstood though that this is for training we want you to stay at least five years this isn't you're going to retire and then we're going to make you pay you paid your dues that's not the intent the intent and this was is training that we pay for right it James? is absolutely so that's the misconception there but the intent is to encourage them to stay and make sure we get our money back both. To make sure we get our investment back, right. absolutely. And, and like Tiffany said, I, I do think it, it should be negotiable mm -hmm. on case to case. And, and, I, and I know what you're going to say, you're going to say it's going to open worms. I understand that. But, uh, you know, my thing is, you say, you know, they train them and leave. Well, my worry is, what if they don't train them and they stay? You know, they right. right. train them. No, it's not to that. discourage the training. This is, this is if we train them and we give them a raise. That's what it's about. Gotcha. You, they don't have to get the raise. raise based off the training they just Absolutely. That, we, that the city is paying for. Exactly. Does Understood. that help swallow yes. that pill a little better? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we good? You guys good with the way it is? I mean, do we want to change the five years? I mean, what what are you thinking? Or are we? I think the five years is correct. All right. Well, 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 I think the five years is correct because we're getting our investment back if they escape that. Laura, do you have any? I kind of agree with what Ashton said about it being a case by case basis. The only thing with case by case, we, <laughs> we want to be consistent. You know, want to make sure we're treating That's the whole point of these policies. Yeah. We haven't been consistent and we need to be. Yeah. So either, you know, so either we 
the five years. I mean, that's fine. Years. I'm not going to cause a war about it. It's fine. But that's just, I mean, that's my opinion on it. I know, but guys, it's not causing enough war. That's the whole point of the work session for us to, you know, decide and whatever we put in place. Yeah. I appreciate y'all's support. I understand. We're happy to answer any questions. So the, the reason is at five, if we can get our money back better that way than we could one year, right? Absolutely. And we at least get five years, but of course we don't want to sound like we're holding people hostage. We That's right. Stay. You know, but I mean, they don't have to take the raise. They can take the, the training. Who doesn't want to be trained? They can want to be trained. Okay. All right, so I don't have any more questions. I'm sure. So if the council agrees to this tonight, will it be effective tonight? That's the question. What, what is it? That's, the That's the question because there are several people that are already going on training. That's my question. So what about um what about October first? Or that first? Yeah, that when that first pay period. Well, October yeah. be better. Yeah, beginning uh, of the fiscal year. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. So if people have training that they've asked for, they can decide if they choose to to not go to the training. Correct. Wait till. They're so they're not penalized. Oh, I see what you're saying. But it's saying. also the availability of the training, too. Right. It takes place there. It takes place. I guess yeah. that's the question. Go ahead. So if I could comment to her Go question. Ahead. Just because you're scheduled for training that the city's paying for does not mean that you have to get an education raise. At the time that you come forward and you say, I've met these requirements, I'm going to get an education raise, that's when that agreement to reimburse is signed. If I take training and go to classes and never get a merit raise, then I'm not responsible to pay back that. So. Okay. okay. Thanks, Cassie. Thank so you. Thanks. So yeah, we can do it effective tonight. Um, uh, one more question. Cassie just gave me another question. <laughs> so if they if they decide to take the training and they don't take the raise and then they quit tomorrow, they can just leave with the training we paid for. There's a 12 months. There's a 12 month. Uh, okay, so there is a stipulation on that. There is. Okay. But we don't pay an increase. Are we good? I guess so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. I think you're going to stay, stay, stay there. Stay there. I know. I know. Hold on. Let's see. So, number 11, discussion that is necessary by human resource, Jane McGee, regarding compass. I cannot, I say it wrong every time. Comp time off. Compensatory <laughs> time. What Jane said. Compensatory time. Compensatory time off change. I'm a little I wish you could have one alone. <clears throat> All right, so the update that you guys have, um, Cassie, so have we reconciled the old, the comp time that was on the old pay plan or pay schedule versus what's been accumulated with the um, new pay plan. So have we have we reconciled that yet? Still in process, still going through, and the goal is to have it done in this fiscal year. Doing everything I can to get that done. Okay. So we really can't do anything until that's reconciled. That's the thing. So um, do you think it'll be done by the next meeting? No. The reconciliation that Cass is doing has nothing to do with whether we want to continue to do comp time or not. All Cass is doing, and correct me if I'm wrong, is reconciling with people who have comp time and who have been paid to make sure the numbers are correct. Mm -hmm. Not comp time in the future. Or no comp time. Which is this or no comp time. Still sorry. Still but this is still a priority. Yes, it's, it's yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So I guess that's the decision that um, we're going to make tonight. And Alex, that's on the agenda to be voted on as well. Well, for the request of the city council president, yes. All right. Okay. So um, I guess now it's time we can, um, I guess, you can share your thoughts. We do need to do it. I think so. We need, to spend, we need to spend it when we spend it, not let it accrue. And I, I agree with Lee, just because it's so hard to keep up with and then it just, it I bring up again, you know, I always felt that this was an executive issue, not a legislative. We've got, this is something that's been worked out with the police, uh, fire department years ago. Every department's got a right to do it. But the fire department, this is something they brought to us years ago. It's worked perfectly. Actually, it's saving us money as far as pay goes. But we do not need to do away with the comp time in the fire department, especially 
we're going to wind up with personnel problems. So are you suggesting we do it across the board or just leave it in just the well, fire department? Just what gas in them just we recommend it across the board. board. You're still saving money by making a decision right. to go against that. You're you're adversely going against your budget you've just Correct. been trying to pass. You really are. More costly. It's going to cost you more money. People are just going to use their that sick leave leave it along no, or burn their vacation. We it, so we need to incur the cost when we incur it, not move it all out. Okay, because it's so a better you're, problem. So you're saying we do away with it when you get the time you're paying for. Correct. That's what you're saying. Okay, just kind of like you were saying. I agree else. with Mr. Perry. And I don't agree with it. And I, I think that it's an incentive for employees to aid in retaining them. I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Okay. Certainly isn't broke. Okay. Well, can I ask one question, if I may? So <clears throat> is the issue about paying out comp time in a timely manner, or is the issue about comp time period? Because from what I'm understanding, y'all have a problem about it being earned at a rate and paid out at a rate. That was y'all's making my, my my issue is it and all to get because comp time is uh, <laughs> It can be misused. I'm not saying anybody's doing it. It can be misused. It can uh, be hard to track at times. Uh, we're dealing with an issue now with you guys, which is not y'all's fault. I think we, we went away from it where I'm employed at just because it was easier just to pay employees their money for what they earned, and it was easier for payroll. It was easier for everybody. That's where I'm coming from. But when it's the comp time's earned, whenever that time's paid, what rate is it paid at? Overtime. If it's, if it's overtime, they, they you talking about when they cash out? Yes. That's regular time. At their regular rate. But I'm saying the rate they earn. Their rate has changed. No, no we the they cash it out that. before it changes. That's not even a problem. But mm -hmm. I know some of y'all keep bringing that up because you've been told that. No. That's not. Well, it. no, that's that's not it. My my issue with it as well. I think if you just because of budgeting purposes. Well, hold on, hold on. Well, I was asking you because I know you know when they earn the comp time. And they take it months or whenever later. Are they paid out? Let's say I'm going to take a comp day. Are they paid out? Let's say they got a raise in between. Are they paid out at that rate or are they paid out at the rate that they earn the comp day at? They're, they're paid out before they get that next raise. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. You done? Yes. So. All right. But the issue we're at now, that that's what we're trying to fix because that didn't happen. So the issue that we're looking into it really has absolutely nothing to do with their comp time and how it's earned. It was a problem that came up when our system, at the beginning of the year, the state of Alabama made a change. And our system no longer worked the way it had been built to work. So there were missing hours. And that's what we're trying to make sure that everybody is accounted for, if it was paid out, how everything, <coughs> It's, it's going through and making sure if they've been paid out, if they're owed hours, etc. That's what that is looking into. But I mean, it's saving us money and it's been in effect. It's not like something new we have to mm -hmm. implement. It's been used, it's been going fine. And Besides the oversight due to a law change, right. yes. I, I don't see what issue has been created. But, but it also was supposed to be paid out before we implemented it. That's not paid by the end. But it's not really saving us yeah. money. It's deferring the compensation. We're That's still right. obligated to pay it, but pay it later. It's yes. a lot easier to pay it in the time period in which it was incurred, so that there's no confusion that the <laughs> issues thing gets lost. And if we're paying somebody, if we're hiring somebody to work, we need to pay them to work, not give them a carrot. When and they it's, ready to and it's very easy to abuse, plain and simple. All right, you keep you keep saying it's easy okay. on everybody. All right, okay. So I, I want to ask him a well, question. Well, hold on. We're not You're out of order. And we're not doing that. <laughs> You're out of order, Jane. Jane. Why is it Jane, hard on everybody? Jane, I'm, I'm going to ask you Why nicely. Ask, but ask because I'm talking, I'm, and I'm going to ask you nicely. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to end the discussion about comp time. Let your vote reflect your decision. That's, I mean, I think everybody has some feelings about it. It's on the agenda to be voted on, and we'll just let the votes reflect whatever decision is made by each council member. Thank you guys so much. I agree with you, Mayor. I know it, but we also can't be disrespectful to council members. We got to respect as well. No, Ashley, I'm gonna really. Every time. Every meeting. Every meeting. The next person that's out of the next person that's out of line, you will be asked to leave. We won't we won't end the meeting. We'll just ask the people who are out of line to leave.
That's what's going to happen tonight. So if everybody could just be respectful. Thank you. And thank you, Jane and Cassie. You're welcome. So number 12, discussion that is necessary by City Clerk Treasurer Alexandra Lambert to reappoint John Wesson and Scott Robertson to the Park and Recreation Board to the five-year term expiring October 2029, term expiring for John Wesson and Scott Robertson. Two applicants applied, John Wesson and Scott Robertson. So on this one, nobody else um, applied. These are just reappointments. So that's why we didn't have to have any interviews. Any questions on this? No. All right. Number 13, discussion that is necessary by City Clerk Treasurer Alexandra Lambert regarding take home vehicles. Further request to the council, we've calculated the gas usage for the last, this fiscal year for department heads and their assistants um, with the exception of the city clerk. Um, the court magistrate is also included um, to reflect what she has been claiming. If anybody needs a magnifying glass, I have three. Again, please, we ask everybody not to speak out of turn. If you would like to say something, let's, let us know and you'll be able to come to the podium so that we can make sure everybody's heard and we're all on the same page. I was asked to look at the top three for the Silicon Police Department and the totals are on page three. I, and we did discuss the street department and why the assistant is so high. Um, compared to the others within the city. Um, we discussed that at the last meeting. We looked at the top for the shop. The building services currently has one vehicle that's a take home. Um, and the fire department has two. Um, their top and then another um, inspector. All right, this gallon. The, yes. The gallon per what? What is this? Gallons per what's in the product? Dollar amount? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's just telling you how many gallons that they fill the tank up. Okay. So if you go to page three, the total is on page three for what's been accumulated up till August. Um, we did not touch the timber. We did not include vehicle maintenance for any of the vehicles. We did not include oil changes um, because that would cause undue stress on the shop department, and that's not really fair <coughs> as he is already short staffed. Is any of this imputed back to the employees and imputed income on their W 2? Um, for certain employees that are taking home, I believe it's marked vehicles. If I'm not mistaken, Jane. That might be a Cassie question. Cassie, Jane, did you guys hear that question? Kim. Certain of your department heads have been coming for a living to have the right to say that I'm going to do this for their take home vehicles. And the police and the fire have been excluded because of the big markings on their shed. Can I ask a question about one of the homes? Yeah, sure, Amber. Can I ask why the court included it? I don't have a call. Correct. I'll drive my personal call, but she wasn't included. Her, hers is based on, it's based on an ordinance or a law That's or something correct. like that as far as the city clerk. But it's for take home cars. I don't have a take home car. Okay, well, we'll just make sure you're excluded from the what, what is it? That, that was correct, but I was asked to, to do the calculations for what she had submitted as far as travel was concerned. We did discuss this in the budget meeting and that's one thing you guys asked me to do. Yeah, we also discussed too that um, Amber is to be considered for you to get mileage moving forward as well too, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything we do is required by law. We yep. go to the jail for hearings. Okay. Yep. It ain't going home. Again, we do ask everybody to keep the extra comments to a minimum. This is a professional meeting and we're just trying to get through this the best we can so that we can all get home. All right, so as far as this sheet, um, anybody have questions? I can put it together. But I know we did talk about um, at the budget meeting, 
about the car that the um, police chief was driving. So are we, is this a part of that? Yes, ma'am, he's included in that, um, he's the top. Yeah, and we were talking about whether we were gonna um, keep allowing him to drive that car or just give him the, um, the I mean, I'm sorry, the fire chief, or to just give him the allocation. And I think it, um, I think it's what, $250? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Madam President, I think you need to reconsider that. That fire chief to me is at the command station, which is. Well, with all due respect, Mr. Mayor, you said what it is, it's a command station. With the amount of time that he's commuting back and forth, I think that command station needs to be in place so it can serve Silicaga. That And that's just how I feel. And so it's the county and the state, if you may, the fire chief speak? Yeah. Well, he, yeah, he can speak, but I'm just telling you okay. what I feel. Okay. I mean, with a command station that important that we purchased for the city of Silicaga, it needs to be here so that it can do its job utilized in the city at all times. That's that's just my thoughts on it. Madam President, uh, yes. just and I, I had a couple of conversations um, between the last conversation and tonight, but the way we operate, vehicles are designed with a specific person in mind and a specific role in operations. If if that vehicle is parked at the fire station, there is nobody on shift assigned to that vehicle to drive that vehicle to a scene. But can't we reassign it? Isn't no, that no, because everybody on shift has a specific role in their specific vehicle. And if we take them out of that role, we, we have a hole in our incident command system. So you're saying the command center needs to be with you at all times when you drive an hour home. So even when you're off and even when you're at home, the command center that we brought to serve the city of Silicaga will be in elected? It, it, it is for expanding incident command systems and expanding incidents. There are over two dozen incident command system classes put on by FEMA and the National Incident Management System. There, this, is, this is a tool to use in larger scale expanding incidents. We have smaller applications for this that are in the captain's truck and in the engines, and, and but this is for expanding incidents and we have a system in place, it is called the Incident Command System, National Incident Management System, where we create a command structure and expand it as necessary. So this, this is not a, a every scene First, be, first do vehicle we put it in use immediately. That's what our fire engines are for. That's what our shift captain is for. That's what their truck is for and they're equipped as such. So why did we need it? Because I was under the understanding that from when you um, when you were asking for this, we needed this. It, we needed this for Silicon. This we was do. to serve our citizens. This was to serve our city. And now we don't need it. We, we do need it. The, like so many of our tools, we have so many different <laughs> hazards that we mitigate in our emergency responses, we don't use, we may go a year or two between using a specific tool on one of our trucks, but when we need that tool, there's no replacement. There's no other tool that will do that job. It's but, like it's like the, the extrication tools that we bought this past year. We don't do an extrication on every car wreck we go to. We don't even perform extrication on the majority of the car wrecks we go to. But one time out of the year justifies buying the tools because without them, we can't perform our job. But again, the tool isn't here all the time to be it, used. It, it, is where, it is here where it needs to be, when it needs to be there. And that is my job as the fire chief, and I can guarantee you that when it's needed, it's where it needs to be to be used. Well, thank you for your feedback. Does anybody else have any um, I, I, things to say? We've, oh, we've talked, oh, I've got one. Right. Okay. Sounds good. So we're good on this one. All right. So there are there any other um, questions? I know we talked about um, building services. We talked about that vehicle. So are we going to leave that one as is and give the compensation? Do we feel that that car needs to be that department needs a take home car, or do we feel? I mean. Well, as I understand it, it's being used from the start of the day to begin work without coming in to check in, so it's saving time on each end. And your yeah, annual home as well. It seems like we're picking favorites, though, with the car situation. We're not picking favorites. Do you have any? That's why we're going over this and we're going down the list. So if you have any questions or concerns about any other departments, that's, that's what this is for. 
So do you have any questions or concerns about anything else on the list? I do believe that, it, you know, the perception is going to be we're picking favorites. You know, not, there's not multiple good. police vehicles driven daily outside of the city limits as well, you know, of the take home cars. And I think that, you know, it's unfair and biased not to allow all of public safety to be under the same vehicle policy along with each department head <coughs> having some type of policy in place. You know, it, it's like we're picking favorites. We're not asking questions about all the departments. We're just picking some departments apart. I thought we did ask we have asked about the police department. department. I know Ashley I thought there's, asked there's, them. There's, but not all the police take home vehicles are listed on what we were given. But it is different with the police. Take home vehicles are used as a recruiting tool as far as um, police. We're trying to stay competitive with, you know, the surrounding police departments and the county. Because I've been, a, you know, a huge advocate for the police having a take home car program, but I also think that we need to be fair to all the department heads that's the whole point of this discussion about yeah. being fair. We're not singling anybody out. We're going through the list and deciding what's needed to be able to do the job. There's no conspiracy to deprive people who need cars of cars. That's an odd position. And also too, we wanna to make sure that the things that we're buying is best used in the city. Because remember, these things are, are for the city of Silver High. So we wanna make sure they are being utilized in the city of Silver High. When needed. Okay. And I speak in an all league because I know you don't mean to leave, but she's right. There are strong favoritism, but it, we're letting one department have all their vehicles, but then you're cake cutting every other department. I'm in a good car, but that's fine. But you're getting but, mileage, so I know, you but, are, you but are but being compensated. For, for doing and doing a DD grant at the jail that's required by a statute. Exactly, but you're but still being compensated. Here, but, but, but these others are not sitting here taking their kids to school in a city car. Again, Amber, thank you for your opinion. So, and again, you're it's not right. I will not be in fair. And you are out of line, as I'm always. Telling the truth. As always. And I really wish the mayor would do something about that because we have a lot of your department head, heads and city employees who are very disrespectful to the council and nothing is being done about it. I mean, it's really irritating. I mean, we have to sit up here and we have to take the disrespect and nothing, nobody's being reprimanded, nobody's being written well, up. Right nothing. Half my nine department heads, uh, priests, show the council all the respect that they deserve. I'm sorry for the confusion, but these people have been living with this for years. Now you're coming here and changing it, and it's sort of hard to fall into a change, you know. Well, Mayor, with all due respect, it's I think been reasonable. I think we're doing everything that's well within our rights because we we are the council. These are the types of things that we decide. But when people disagree with the decisions that the council are making, you can't you can't have outbursts. You can't have disrespect because you disagree with the council. And we all know how this works. If you don't like the council that's put in place, then you go to you, you elect somebody else. But as of right now, this is the council that is put in place and we would really like some respect. And it takes a lot for us to sit up here and do what we do. And I hope nobody thinks we do it for the money, but it would just be nice to have a little bit of respect and you back us up when the employees are being disrespectful. Well, I'll make every effort to counsel. Nine departments will be respectful of this council. And as a- You understand that they're frustrations. But they take, they should take those frustrations out with you, Mayor. They should deal with you. You're their boss. That's right. They shouldn't be dealing with That's us directly. Taking it out yeah. And again, also, I'm going to ask, I'm going to request this. I don't know how everybody else feels, but there should be some disciplinary action when an employee or a department head gets out of line at a council meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion that is necessary by City Clerk Treasurer Alexandra Lambert regarding Isabel Common Museum appropriation totaling $10,000. And this is um, when we did the regular budget, guys, and Alex will explain this. She asked for she asked for the additional stuff that she needed, but she forgot to ask for her original appropriation. So it wasn't included in the dollar amount that um, we're going to consider tonight. Just a mistake. Yeah. So she, she forgot to um, ask for it and include it. Right. Um, and we did include the 10,000 um, in the budget that is projected to be approved tonight. Um, so it's in, it's in the total do it's in a total dollar amount. Yes, ma'am. After talking with you, um, you had asked me to include that. Yeah. Um, so when you guys see the number has increased by the $10,000 from what we did in the budget meeting, this is why. Do you have any questions? Do we have any questions on that? 
Discussion that is necessary by City Clerk Treasurer Alexandra Lambert to enter, enter into an IT support agreement with Ameritech for IT support block time from October 1st through November 30th, 2024, totaling $10,875 per month. 75, hour, 75 hours at a rate of $145 unused hours are rolled to the following month. So everybody's aware we changed the IT companies. Um, as of September 5th, I believe it was, um, we are no longer with the existing company we were with. We did not use over 40 hours with them, so the city will be getting that money back this fiscal year. Um, the CEO of Ameritech contacted me yesterday um, to discuss this because we can't roll any hours from September this fiscal year over to the new year. Um, there are hours left um, the entire month of September, those 75 hours the city council had previously approved for the month of September, we will not be billed because we have not used the hours we were supposed to. Not, we just, we just can't not roll. supposed to, but we can't roll them because then you're crossing fiscal but we're not, we haven't purchased any hours, but we're going to lose our money on either, though, right? Right, we're going to get the money October, back. We can roll uh, October to November. We, well, yes, sir, that's correct. We can roll October to November, but we can't roll over anything over. But I still don't understand what we're spending $11,000 a month on for IT support. I haven't I seen the contract. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me at all that we spend that much money on IT support as that definition. It doesn't make sense. Yes, sir. Um, I did send an email to, um, I believe it was the council president today, and I believe it was yourself. Um, we're having trouble with the firewall system. The new IT company can't access it because the previous IT company doesn't know the username and password. Oh, wow. Um, and that was sent, like I said. Um, so that, that has a potential to create a problem. The hours each month will not be 75, but they do roll. Um, this is for instance, the court is having an issue with Springbrook. I can't fix Springbrook that requires IT support. Um, they're coming in and they're rearranging computers because we, per the council, we, you guys purchased 10 computers for us. We still need them to come in and remove computers. Um, for instance, the fire department, they're going to get a new computer. We want to move one of their old computers to the designated place where they want. We have to have hours to do that. Well, and let me piggyback off that. If we're spending this kind of money on contracted services, we already have a job description. Why don't we advertise and hire an IT director? Well, let me, let me ask you. I agree with that because this is a lot every month. I mean, what, how much have we paid so far into this? I know it's fairly new, but it seems like we've put a lot into it so far. Well, that's what I was going to add versus what the old system, the old contract that was in place. So what, what is that looking like? What is the cost savings or increase looking like? Right now it's a cost savings of $40 an hour. Uh -huh. So what about, um, but what about, what about total? Because I know it's new, so is it just, a large amount because we're having to do a lot of installation and you're expecting once we get all the computers and the firewall and things like that taken care of it's not gonna be this much right it's gonna go down each month i mean we've had them for 90 days now because that was the overlap yeah. um we didn't touch the old company's hours so we're getting all those back the new company they're looking into our systems checking our firewalls our security um, Captain Muse has also been involved because of the police department and making sure that they're secure as well. Um, as we stated at the last council meeting, we had no server backups. We do now. That's so we've these never, yeah, we've never had those. Uh, the reason we're coming to the council every month, and I understand it seems like a lot, but the old company did not have anybody sign an agreement. There's the difference. The old company just asked, hey, you know, we need hours, and it was approved. This company is putting into an agreement for the council to be made aware of. And we see everything, we see where you every have dollar to see is going. Every agreement, there's the difference. That's why you're seeing it. Um, we can get the council um, a printout that says what we spent from the old company versus the new company, like and that's that. fine. Um, that's, that's not a problem. If you don't want to approve both months, that's not a problem either. We can only approve one. 
but to start October 1st with no IT for the city and no firewall, no security, and the issue with the police department still. Well, let's, oh, go ahead. We'll come in. Who was in charge of the RICO contract? It would be the IT person, but that now goes to the city clerk, which is not in the job description. But there was a folder that had all of the passwords, all of the firewall configurations, because I remember seeing it at one time. And my recollection is that that was assigned at some point to Nicole Brown, but I don't know that that's the case. I just remember it being talked about. There's got to be, the city can't not know its own passwords to its systems. So we also had a change in city clerk and county manager. We've had a lot of turnover in that office too, so. But somebody, somebody has to have a folder with all of this stuff in it, unless it got to destroyed. So Alex, uh, we're, we don't, sorry, uh, we don't know anything about firewalls. Um, so even if we had the password, I would be very uncomfortable going in and doing something. I am a non-techie person. So Alex, I know we're here. We're here now. And we got these new computers coming. We're, we're trying to get everything set up on the same system. So could you just print off what we spent last year with RICO versus, you know, what we got now and just show a month to month comparison. We can. And also make sure it's specified based on, um, what do you call it? Setup. Based on- um, new, we, new versus recurring. Yeah, new versus recurring, what we said. So that way we can just see what we were paying versus actual. I think that'll just help us a little bit more just to try to understand what's going on. Yes, and it'll probably, help you right and Ameritech is um has offered to come and explain all of this to the city. i think if we said it i think it's going to serve us to see it on paper we're going to have to see the numbers that would help. yeah based on month to month you guys do agree with that the, do we want one of them to come to the next meeting just to double down on what's going to do with the list of products don't know they I explain don't, the firewall situation I, all I can't explain that he had sent like five paragraphs let's just Let's hold off on that. Maybe, okay. maybe not not next meeting, but let's just hold off. Let's just get that printout in front of us first, and then because the printout may be self-explanatory, we may not need somebody else to come out. We may be able to understand, you know, when we see old versus new. But so, she's in, but she's in jeopardy if she doesn't have yeah for this October, October first. first. And then keep in mind too, make sure on the printout it shows what was implemented versus what we didn't have with Rico as well. No problem. We can do that. Um, could we at least approve maybe 50 hours for the month of October? Well, I mean, this is up to the council. This is the thing. So even if we don't approve it now, it's going to end up being on our September 30th meeting or it's going to be on that October 1st meeting. Which so, is too late. Yeah. So it's, it's like, if we're going to do it, we may as well just do it now. Because all we're going to do is just split it up. And it's going to be back on the next agenda. Mm -hmm. so, we, so I think we should just go ahead and approve what you're requesting. Psychologically, could we prove not to exceed 10875 mm -hmm. in case it works out to be less? I think the dollar amount is what it is, though. This is a hard number, though, right? Yes, ma'am. It's yeah. 140 It's a dollar amount, amount based on the amount of hours. So we're 75 hours is equals this dollar amount. So we're not going over the 10875 No. Per right. month. Well, this, hopefully, in November, is not going to be this much because we're not going to buy any new computers it in November. Says, this it says well. November. It says October, November, yes. Oh. But we don't have to approve November. I have two separate contracts. So we just don't want to have to keep coming back to the council, truth be told. So what does the resolution say, though? There's not a resolution for that. <coughs> well, the, is it is to be voted on? So what does it say? Is uh, for October and November, but we can cross off the November. I think I think it's okay to just go ahead and do it, and we're gonna have to see. Hopefully, just let's just keep an eye on it monthly. So once you get us that printout, we can keep an eye on it monthly. Print out a hell. Yeah. yeah. For the <clears> immediate <throat> time being, you gotta have IT. That's right. Yeah, we did, person in place. And we just got these new computers services. as well too. That's right. So, Alex, just make sure that list is um is in depth. Oh yes, ma'am. All right, number 16, discussion that is necessary by City Clerk Treasurer Alexandria Lambert to hire a consultant to advise and assist with administrative and financial related items as necessary and effective October 1st, 2024, funding from unused salaries. So this is um, Melody. This is you asking to extend Melody's contract. It, it is, but as a reminder, um, you had asked me to discuss the police department first. Uh, um, 
For those of you that are unaware, the police department flooded on Saturday. Everybody here is aware. I made sure I tried my best okay. to keep everybody updated. So, you did very well keeping us informed. Um, we called all the local um, plumbers and we did have one outside the city that responded. Um, it appears in uh, Chief, if if uh, I misspeak, can you tell me? It appears that the drain line has collapsed, um, going downstairs to the police department, which is where the water is running. Um, there are pictures. If anybody hasn't seen them yet, I'd be more than happy to share them. Um, Amic, our insurance company, did come out today um, and did a site assessment. Uh, Surf Pro was very quick to respond to the police department. I think within probably an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Um, there's still fans and everything downstairs. Um, Surf Pro has been asked to um, steam clean the carpet downstairs to make sure any residual water um, so that they can come back and assess the damage. We went back with carpet again downstairs in certain places? Huh? Certain places, yes ma'am, squares. That way you could pull them up? All of the investigations um, was affected, I think, but maybe one office. No, it, it got, um, one, two, three, four. So can you tell us the new damage on the new stuff? Sir? Can you tell us the damage on the new stuff that we just replaced? <laughs> yes, so, um, investigations got flooded, except for two offices halfway. All of the sergeant's office got flooded, the lieutenant's office got flooded, three quarters of investigation always got flooded, one quarter of records got flooded, all of the outside hallway got flooded. The both bathrooms downstairs got flooded. And this is mainly floor and wall. It's not like equipment or... Computers are not on the floor yeah, anymore, right? That's correct. And, and uh, Mike Weston had the presence of mind to drop the walls about only that far up because he saw this happen again. So we didn't, we didn't lose that. But it's supposed to be water-resistant tile and water-resistant carpet. They got to check tomorrow the next day to see if there in fact will be any mold or anything. We have uh, worked with Mike, and Mike's been dealing with um, the contractor or the the individual the, um, that's coming out to help with the repairs. Um, but like I said, Amic has been notified. Um, they did come out today. So is it going to be? Um, does it fall up under insurance? Um, is it, a it depends on what uh, the contractor finds. To be honest, um, and then Amic has to research the flaws. Everything in the police department that was damaged, he did say, will be reimbursed to the city. And so far, we have a pair of boots, a couple of uniforms, two boxes of copy paper that I found so far. Like I said, we learned to keep it up. Right. Is there a deductible? Is there a deductible? Uh, there is a drainage deductible, but they're researching that as well. Um, but they're classifying this as an emergency because. We have to boil our water, so if someone uses the restroom, uh, that's an issue. But we do have water in the facility. Um, I did ask them if this was classified, and we had to get quotes, and they said no because of the water. Because of the water, it's emergency. Um, so we did, and I did authorize um, the PO for the emergency on Saturday in the amount of three hundred and seventy dollars for the contractor. Um, we will be getting more expensive, you know, um, the, the quote I gave you. Um, that's just a prelim. We don't have any. Um, so we don't even know. This is just the um, cost per day, hour, right? right? Yes, ma'am. Um, and that's, we just wanted to provide the council an update um, to try and get it fixed. So what's the next step? Just take an inventory of uh, um, damaged goods? Right. To um, know what specific spots to fix? Correct. Yes, he's sir. doing that and he needs to provide that to the city clerk's office, which they're working on. Um, like I said, we'll forward all that to AMIC. The adjuster is going to work with everybody to get it cleared up. Um, we're just waiting on that contractor to let us know when they can begin. Um, cost, we don't know yet. Normally, the city has to pay for it up front, and then we get the reimbursement once the project is complete. Yeah, we've been through it a couple times. So we've been through it a couple times. At this point, so. Yes. Okay. Y'all have any more questions on this? 
So, Melody. Oh, hold on, one more thing. I'm sorry. What about the other stuff that we lost due to that mold? What What did we decide to do? I should remember, but I don't like that list of. Um, yes, ma'am, that's correct. Um, I forgot. The city that. has to pay for all that. So, what did we decide? Did we decide to buy the? We did not. We decided to get the bare minimum just to get by. But what was? So, how are we paying for the bare minimum? What the? They needed to use the fire first. That's on the agenda for tonight to be approved. That's we decided we weren't going to seek um, uniforms and all that at this time until we were sure the dehumidifier worked. None of that is reimbursable to the city for AMIC because there is a clause in our work contract. So, contract. so what happens if we don't buy anything, we don't have anything back up? What happens if something breaks? Can we just still get the necessities and store them somewhere else? Well, uh, yes, we can. Or like a pair of boots we lost Saturday, I was able to find another pair in the box and provide it. We just, until you allow us to buy the minimum, we, what comes with mates, we just have to deal with it. So can we, can we do that with a purchase order, Alex? We can. Um, the council has to approve the amount. And, yeah. um, with okay. everything going on these last few weeks, um, he did provide me the detailed breakout. Um, I did not put it on the agenda. But the dehumidifier is. So we can add it to the September 29th. Um, if that's okay with the council. But you're looking at his overall list was. I believe 13. No, that was for the necessities. That wasn't to replace everything. Oh, the overall list? The overall list. 45,000. 45,000 in the necessities. He was asking for was up to 14. And they did have it itemized. Um, but um, we like things to look the way easier presented to the council. I just told them to be careful and don't care now. <laughs> All right. Thanks for that update. Um, so, Melody? Yes. So, Melody um, is a consultant. Yes, she's $50 an hour. Um, she is CPA certified. She does have a master's in accounting and um, she has done a phenomenal job for those of you that have talked to her um, in helping with the city. Um, I know there was some um, scuttlebutt as far as um, she's found money and freed up money. There was, she didn't do any of that. All she's doing is making sure the accounting is correct. Um, we don't have a qualified accountant right now we haven't had one in 15 months. So yes, she's helping the city clerk's office, but she's also training, um, and the council did ask her to help with the audit, also the bond, um, because that was the first time a lot of folks in my office had done that. Um, so until such time as a qualified accounting manager is hired, we're asking to use the unused salaries not fringe, not benefits, just the unused salaries to continue the consultants. How long are you um, asking? So you're just asking up until we hire somebody. That's correct. So when do you think that would be? Um, jobs were posted and they close on September 30th. Then the test has got to be ordered, um, however long that takes. So probably end of October? I would say November, truth be told, there's interviews and process. I guess. But we also had, didn't we have somebody to apply for that and take that test as well? That's correct. We had 10 people apply and, and nobody passed. 10 people failed. That's correct as well. And this just from your department's new salaries, right? From the salaries that are um, allocated. We don't really look at departments, but yes, because we have a vacancy. Yes, that's correct. So once she hires somebody, there won't be any more money to have the consultant, right? Because that's correct. that salary would go to the new hire. That's correct. <laughs> and hopefully we can train them up. Yes. Well, I know she was very um, helpful during the budget, so I, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, I've, well, I've seen her work she's done firsthand, so yeah. I, don't yeah. care. I don't have a problem at all. I think she's helped a lot. And done. You guys could have done as much as it's got accomplished. I know, and I think Walter would probably vote for as well. <laughs> Thank you, Walter. Y'all have any questions on anything? 
All right, so that's the last um, item on the work session agenda. Does anybody have anything else? You will take a little bit of a recess. Yeah, I am, but I just want to make sure I, that when we come back, we'll just go to the council meeting versus coming back to the um, That'd be fine. work session. Right. You guys have anything you want to share as far as the work session? All right. Nope. All right, so we're going to um, adjourn the work session, and we'll take a 10-minute restroom break, stretch your legs, get a drink, and we'll, so we'll come back at 623. Yes, ma'am.